All right, then, without further ado, uh, I'll briefly introduce myself. My name is Stephen Gallagher. I have been at Red Hat for a baker's dozen of years. Uh, it is, it has been a wonderful ride and I intend many, uh, many further years with the company. Uh, I've worked on a number of different projects at Red Hat, uh, but most recently I've worked on the, uh, the team that bootstraps uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, I was on the team that bootstrapped uh, RHEL 8. I was also on the team that produced modularity for RHEL 8. And coming around to RHEL 9, we, were, we wanted to take a quick look at, well, I, I shouldn't say a quick look. We wanted to take a deep look at what it was that bootstrapping a, a Red Hat Enterprise Linux really meant. Because it's a long, painful process that happens, let's call it very infrequently. Um, with RHEL 8, I think it was almost five years between uh, RHEL 7 and RHEL 8. But prior to that, at some point, at some arbitrary point, what we would do is we would say, okay, this Fedora just released. We like that one. We will take that and we will bootstrap it. And we'll try to, uh, we'll try to get a, something uh, minimal that we can use to start building RHEL atop. And this... To call it painful would be uh, generous. This was an extremely time-consuming and uh, manual effort-driven process. And it, it and the, the problem was that it tended to burn people out. And so between RHEL 6, RHEL 7, and RHEL 8, I think there was very little continuity of personal, personnel doing these bootstraps, uh, which, of course, meant that every new team was going to have to learn it themselves. So that led to uh, bootstraps tended to take six to 12 months after we forked from a Fedora to actually get something that could boot at least as far as the installer, um, which is not good. And that was definitely something that uh, now that we at Red Hat have announced that there's going to be a three year schedule for releases. So we're going to be releasing RHEL 9 probably next year. And then three uh, years after that, uh, we'll be releasing RHEL 10. Three years after that, we'll be re releasing uh, RHEL 11. And hopefully I'll be retired before we have to release RHEL, tw RHEL 12. But uh, there had to be, a, uh, there has to be a better way of uh, building RHEL from the ground up and taking advantage more of the resources that we have available to us with Fedora, not just uh, uh, physical, not just physical resources like the uh, like the build system and the uh, um, and the infrastructure there, but also the person, the the people, the the human resources that uh, are excited to help us actually produce something that we can maintain, not just uh, something that we, not just something that we can. Something that we use as a hobby is is where we start with Fedora, but there are definitely a lot of interested parties who want to build something that will be able to last for 10 years and support their applications. And we want to be able to do that much more in the public. And that was something I'd been fighting for at Red Hat for north of a decade. And this last couple of years, we've had uh, some huge changes in how we uh, build software at, Fedora, at RHEL, at Red Hat, I'm sorry. With the, on, with the uh, advent of CentOS Stream for, for RHEL 8, uh, which admittedly had a rocky beginning, um, but I think people have started to come around to recognizing just how exciting it is to be able to actually publicly contribute directly to the uh, work that we're doing. And similarly, it's it's beneficial for the red hatters because there's a lot more view a lot more eyes a lot more uh, code review a lot more uh just assistance in all sorts of ways documentation and whatnot uh with being able to do their development in the public so we wanted we sat down and we wanted to take stock of that and and just figure out okay we still have that same problem with centos stream 9 we we need to find a way, we need to be able to bootstrap that in such a way that another team can continue to do that for uh, for CentOS Stream 10 and so on. So we start so we began a new project and uh, we gave that project the code name El Nino. 
uh, which it, it is a pun, uh, as any of you who have seen me give a talk before knows, I'm very, very fond of puns. Um, the name, of course, uh, derives in part from uh, L, the E-L portion, uh, stands for Enterprise Linux, just like it does in Apple or RHEL. Um, the Nino portion is the Spanish word for male child. Uh, the implication being, of course, that this project should always represent the immature version of what will grow up into Enterprise Linux. Um, and then, of course, collectively, uh, El Nino is also uh, the, the name of a type of weather pattern that occurs about every three to four years in the Northern Hemisphere and brings quite significant storms with it. Um, so I think I feel like the uh, the metaphor there should be relatively obvious. So so we embarked on ELN and we, uh, sorry, what, what would eventually become uh, ELN uh, as a more palatable public name as a mechanism of con of bootstrapping the next major version of RHEL continuously throughout the Fedora process, rather than having them be two completely dis disjoint uh, projects, we allow our, uh, our engineers and our packagers to be working towards uh, the, the bootstrap of the next version of RHEL right from the moment that we, fo uh, that we fork off the current version of RHEL. So, uh, so what exactly does that mean? What is it, what is it that ELN does for us? It's an early preview of what RHEL N plus one will look like. And it allows us to do some packaging and uh, work and uh, to maintain RHEL style changes upstream in Fedora and test them and prove out that they work well in advance of that moment when we break off and uh, and start and uh, start hardening rel so what are those uh, what do those changes look like um, some of them are very uh, are, are very straightforward we've got things like uh, compilers uh, compiler optimizations or compiler flags perhaps we know that the upcoming rel is going to drop support for really old hardware so we want to make sure that everything can still build if we have an, on the newer higher baseline uh, or on newer or on some new uh, hardware that we may or may not have yet um, whether or not we want to turn on some optional optimizations uh, things like link uh, like lto has been a very big uh, very big topic over the last uh, few years and uh, i'm happy to say that we are nearing the middle of that process. So that's good. Um, some other things that are fairly common in RHEL, but have, always, have traditionally not happened in Fedora is in RHEL, we try to minimize the number of packages that we have to maintain, uh, particularly because we're maintaining it for a very, very long time. And that's a lot of work, even for a relatively minor package. You have to worry about, uh, you know, what happens when, when a CVE comes in, what happens when a major bug fix comes in, and that. And for every package, we have to have somebody who's responsible for it. So naturally, in RHEL, our goal is to bring is to try and find what is that minimum subset of packages that absolutely must be in the distribution in order for the in order for RHEL to be able to deliver on its promises of, uh, of uh, stability and its promises of being a platform for running uh, stably whatever uh, application you want to do, you want to put on it. So one of the things that uh, we've done a lot over the years is we've trimmed dependencies out where they are, where they may exist in Fedora, but we have, for example, many packages oftentimes uh, have experimental or uh, or testing uh, options that are enabled in Fedora because it's often usually built as a sub package or, or otherwise made available in Fedora because that's what Fedora is. Fedora is exciting. Fedora is new. Fedora is features. And we want our friends to have those features. Um, but we have different needs in an enterprise distribution. So one of the things that ELN allows us to do is start to, is to work up further back in the, in the uh, timeline to trim out some of those things that 
probably aren't going to make it into rel like uh you know like an experimental feature that we know isn't ready for prime time or um that we want to make or maybe we want to eliminate not have to maintain a whole lot of uh, build time dependencies uh so maybe we allow it not uh, allow uh the eln version of the package to not have to run its uh com its uh packaging time tests and instead we put those in a in a test suite that is allowed to pull packages from PyPy or uh, any of the or or Maven or any of the other uh, packaging uh, services instead of us having to maintain in the in the rel distribution the actual uh, the, the package for customers to use for arbitrary uh, purposes for a decade so uh, you know, in the past, in rel eight, rel seven, rel six, that tended to be the sort of thing that was done that we started working on after that six to twelve month period of bootstrapping. Once we had a system that was working, we then spent another six months, generally, pulling as many packages out of that as we could, and sometimes, sometimes uh, more successfully than others, and sometimes we would still end up with just cruft in the distro that we were now stuck with maintaining. Um, because we just couldn't find a way to get to stop that one package that it was using it from pulling it in. With ELN, we now have the opportunity and our packagers, especially the, uh, you know, our Red Hat uh, people have that option now to make those changes, add those conditionals or change those build, uh, those build flags, six, 12, 18, 24 months before uh, it's actually it, before we have to heart, you know be cut down and this is it we're at beta everything after this is a bug fix it gives them that opportunity uh, that opportunity and in turn that means significantly less stress and more time spent on doing the things that uh, you know engineers find interesting and customers love to see which is building features adding uh, fixing bugs uh, adding functionality, and generally just making a better product for the uh, for the user so we'll, we do that and we and we'll be building that along the way and it, ELN has its own composes we uh, every night uh, we attempt to compose uh, they've been broken on and off for the last month uh, for a variety of different reasons generally related to new de uh, dependencies turning up or disappearing that uh, or changing names because uh, we just branched off rel 9 as everyone knows from fedora 34 and uh now it's a it's that churny period of, of fedora's history where tend where people tend to put throw in all of the uh the really big changes tend to go in right after that because they've been held, holding them back uh, so uh, so we're trying to get that back up and running but uh in general the goal is to have a preview of eln an eln compose every day uh, when you, uh once a day. So I, I mentioned before a little bit about uh, how Fedora, uh, how we broke the inheritance in Fedora 34, and then CentOS Stream broke. Uh, CentOS Stream then took over. We wanted to uh, at this point, all changes are now uh, EL only. At this point, uh, this is this is really the point where. Um, we're finalizing the bootstrap. We're trying to get to uh, what we internally refer to as an alpha. We don't really have a public alpha release, but uh, that's the point at which uh, that we used to describe as, okay, we've got a bootable installer. Now, uh, nowadays we're doing that pretty much in CentOS Stream, uh, in this case, CentOS Stream 9. And it seems to, it, again, Seems to be going really well, uh, and we've got we've gotten quite a few uh, uh, non Red Hat contributions, which is absolutely delightful and what exactly what we wanted to see. Um, we learned a few things in the in the in this Rel nine process, this ELN uh, to Rel nine uh, to CentOS Stream nine process. Uh, first of all, uh, when we initially designed the the process we were going to follow, uh, we had our we had plans and we executed on these plans to branch uh, from Fedora, Fedora 34 at GA freeze, at final freeze. And the reason for that was because we want, we needed to have a hard date. We knew that um, we uh, the rel planning needed to know exactly when we could make that branch because there's a lot of moving parts that have to happen internally. 
And uh, so what we did, it was so we reasoned that, okay, we want to get pull in as much stuff from Fedora without having to, without having to have our packagers maintaining, uh, you know, pulling things over manually as long as we can. So the hard, so the latest fixed date we have is the GA freeze. So great. We break, we broke at the uh, final freeze for Fedora 34. What we discovered, however, was that this introduced a couple of uh, some, some uh, confusion because there was a per that period of about a month and a half between uh, the branch date when Fedora 34 became its own branch and the uh, actual uh, final freeze. And it turns out that uh, that time that month month and a half really confused our packagers because they didn't uh, they didn't uh, despite as much messaging as we tried to do they couldn't uh, follow that uh okay so committing it to rawhide no longer gets it into what's going to be el uh, what's going to be rel 9 um they had to for a month they had to commit to fedora 34 and then all of a sudden now that closes off and they're committing to sent to us stream so that 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 was a bit of a struggle and that was a little confusing and people uh, and uh so what we're going to do next time around which should be around fedora 40 unless we skip uh, unless we uh change our numbering scheme or skip a uh, skip a release um we're going to actually make that branch right at the uh the fedora 40 branching date instead of the uh the final freeze date um and similarly uh one of the other things that happened when we when we uh, broke the inheritance at final freeze is uh of course that very moment eln suddenly stopped tracking rel 9 and became and started tracking rel 10 so anything that was going into rawhide at that point congratulations that will be in the next version of rel as far as, as far as we know from now and we have and we can we have started already to bootstrap rel 10 and rel 9 isn't even out yet in beta that that was the uh, that was the goal of this project and uh, it's it's working and what we need from here is as much help as anyone's willing to give to help us get to that next that next rel 10 and, and if you have exciting things you want to do there you can already start doing that it's not uh, you can do it you do it in rawhide fedora gets uh, reaps the benefit and we automatically rebuild it into the with the eln flags and and compiler compiler flags and optimizations and uh, and uh, and conditional macros and we just try to keep that composed up and running. And then somewhere down the line on around, around Fedora 40, RHEL 10 is spawned. And that's how you get a RHEL. So I am going to move to questions. And I'm on a different screen right now, so I got to. All right. So uh, I will go through the Q&A. Uh, Paul Flaherty, uh, what is ELN and where do I get it as a test? Okay, so I hope I, I hope uh, that I've described uh, what ELN is to date and or up to up to this point. But uh, e the compose for ELN is available at um, odcs.fedoraproject.org, I believe, uh, and it's updated. Well, there, there's a compose attempted every night, uh, and the last successful one is always available under the latest sim link. So you can pull you can pull a, a uh, an installer image or just install from the uh, tree there at, uh, anytime you wish. Um, I don't see any other questions in the Q and A. Oh, sorry. Uh, can I have a link to the presentation? Uh, if you go to the schedule page on the Fedora Wiki for Nest, I put a link into the uh, uh, into this entry on the schedule. Uh, should be easy to find. It's the only it's the only link on that page, last I checked. <laughs> um, okay. Um, looking, I'm just scrolling past the uh, back in the chat now because I don't see any. Qu oh wait, uh, this is going to sound silly. Is there any documentation on how to bootstrap something similar to Rel? Um, well, <laughs> uh, not really. That's that's again. That was the pro one of the problems we were trying to solve with ELN was 
it's too it's they were too separated and they were too far apart and the teams tended to ch change so we didn't have a whole lot of institutional knowledge and by extension didn't have an easy way to uh, transfer that knowledge and to store it so at this point what we're trying to do is uh, we're not going to be just attempting to describe how to start an entirely new oper uh, an entirely new distribution that's um, well, Actually, that's not entirely true. We, what we are going to be discussing is how to create a new distribution using Fedora as its base. And some of that's covered in, in material that's, um, that's available to uh, uh, Fedora remixes, uh, the documentation that we have for that. And some of that's available, uh, and some of that is still needs to be written. Um, if you are interested in, in learning how to do that and in turn helping write that, uh, that uh, documentation, we would love to have you. Uh, we have an ELN uh, special interest group. It meets uh, every other Friday, usually. Uh, I think we canceled this week, or was it? it I forget if it was supposed to be this week or next week um, on IRC. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Um, if it doesn't, please ask. feel free to ask another. How do we get features included into ELN? Um, so in general, um, if you make changes to one of the packages that is currently uh, that is currently on the ELN uh, content list, uh, those are going to go in for the next uh, for for rel ten unless you know the maintainers of that package reject it outright. Um, if you have uh, if you have new features, new functionality, new packages that you really want to get into into um, ELN and RHEL, that is a little trickier and that's going to involve uh, a, a conversation with Red Hat because we do, again, try to keep the things very small, but um, you know, if there's, a, if there's a good justification for it, uh, then file a bugzilla, ask for, ask for inclusion, you know, build, it in, well, build it in Fedora proper first, file a bugzilla against Red Hat Enterprise Linux and ask for it to be included. Um, on top of that, uh, we are also looking at, uh, and this is going to touch a little bit on Troy's question about what is ELN extras. We're going to be looking at building a something like uh, something like Apple that tracks ELN throughout its throughout its uh, life cycle, and eventually, when when ELN forks into CentOS Stream, have that fork into the next version of Apple as well. Um, I'm actually going to invite if Troy is if Troy wants to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, he's definitely the expert, so I, I, I'd invite him to uh, join the uh, join as a speaker if he wants to cover that uh, cover a little more. Um, though I'm going to admit I'm not entirely sure how I approve him doing that, or if I can. Uh, if Maria is still he is still here, uh, maybe she can help. She is not still here, is she? Okay. Um, well, in that case, uh, I hope that my current ex uh, explanation serves. And if not, uh, please feel free to ask for additional questions. Um, or Troy, if you want to just type in the in the chat, you're uh, you're completely wrong. Um, that's also valid. Uh, just scrolling back through the chat real quickly to see if there were any questions that didn't make it to the Q and A. Um, Rachel, uh, you always think of Rel as female. I actually tend to agree with you on this, uh, but the Chris Farley joke didn't work. So otherwise uh, would have gone with La Nina. But then also the EL wouldn't have worked, and then it just all falls apart. Um, thank you for the uh, for, for the comments about the memes. I was hoping that would go over well. Uh, oh, and uh, Davide Kavalka, and I apologize if I'm uh, mispronouncing that, uh, has mentioned that they also mirror uh, ELN at uh, mirror.facebook.net slash Fedora ELN. And... Uh, Oh, got one more question. Is there any way to find you guys in IRC? Yes, um, we are on libera.chat. Uh, we were formerly on Freenode. Um, in the 
pound fedora dash eln channel uh you can also find us on the regular the, the regular uh, fedora dash devel channel uh as i think uh, th i think uh, that is a proper superset of the people that hang out in fedora eln So please feel free to join us, and uh, we'd love to have you. Oh, uh, I almost forgot. Uh, if you uh, also, if you want to find us by email, um, we use the regular Fedora Devel list. Uh, we normally just uh, ca just add to the subject line, uh, you know, brackets ELN to uh, make sure that it calls attention uh, to, to those of us uh, working on ELN. Uh, one more question: Is there a matrix room for Fedora ELN? Um, I, we, ha well, I mean, we are, uh, I believe we only just have Libera chat, uh, bouncing through matrix. So, ah, here we are. Welcome. Troy. Sorry about that. Um, three minutes, if you, if you would be so kind. Uh, ELN extras, uh, for those packages that are not in the Red Hat set. So Red Hat says, we want all these packages in the next rail but you want to track it for some other reason. Uh, currently, the only thing right in there right now is the KDE set, uh, which I put in. The reason we are actually not planning on moving these over to ELN you know, Apple next time, but it is so that um, KDE wants to make sure that the packages will build properly in the rail setting in Apple. So we are going to track it. So as in three years, as we make changes to the KDE packages, we know that they will build on rail without any of this. If Fedora is greater than 40 problems. Uh, when we did rel eight, that was the biggest thing. If Fedora is, is greater than 30, do this, and it's supposed to do, do rail. Anyway, uh, ELN extras, not gonna be part of rail but isn't automatically moved into Apple Next, but it can be. Uh, if you want to know about Apple Next, see my talk tomorrow. Yes, uh, absolutely. Please, uh, anyone who is interested in uh, Apple Next or ELN Next, uh, Troy is giving a talk tomorrow at 2.30? Uh, or it Depends what time zone you're in. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry, uh, Eastern. Eleven thirty. okay. <laughs> so yes, 2.30 two Eastern time, uh, which is the con standard time according to the way the wiki but uh thank you very much and with that i believe we have come up to the end of our time so uh if you have any further questions uh, i will be hanging around the event i'll probably hang around in the social channel for a while uh, feel free to come up and ask thank you very much everyone